Hello and welcome. I am Ladi Akiri Dolwale. Tonight, Nigeria proposes establishment of Migration Training Academy as ECOWAS heads of migration discuss ways of tackling challenges of free movement in the sub-region. Inspector General of Police seeks support of Nigerians in tackling security challenges across the country as it turns media organizations in Lagos, including Channels Television. Many homes flooded as Orton River in the Sapala area of Delta State bursts its banks. And President Donald Trump says U.S. relationship with Russia is at a dangerous low. On business news tonight, Nigeria's central bank and bankers react to international monetary fund warnings to fend series of monetary interventions. And in sports news, former heavyweight world champion Vladimir Klitschko retires from boxing, rolling out a rematch with Britain's Anthony Joshua. And from Abuja, acting president Yemi Oshibajo meets Niger Delta leaders at the presidential villa to resolve issues bordering on development in the oil producing region. We we'll begin tonight with a huge task before immigration chiefs in the ECOWAS sub-region, and that is for them to do everything possible to curb the menace of transborder crimes. The immigration chiefs are meeting in Abuja to discuss, amongst other things, the need to share security intelligence and work together to facilitate free movement of persons across borders. Nigeria's Foreign Affairs Minister, Geoffrey Onyema, who represented the acting president, says the federal government plans to establish a migration training academy for the ECOWAS region. Our correspondent, Gloria Ume Ezeoke, reports. ECOWAS heads of immigration, service chiefs and members of the diplomatic hall convene at this annual meeting to foster regional collaboration to enhance effective migration management in West Africa. Representing the acting president, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyama, highlights the security challenges across the borders, urging immigration chiefs to focus on maximizing the gains of migration while finding solutions to border crimes. So there are benefits to migration. It should not be seen uh, purely as uh, a negative uh, phenomenon. Hence, I wish the Commission to consider a proposal from the Nigerian government for the establishment of a migration training academy. In addition, the European Union continues to consolidate its support for the region. The European Union's financial contribution of 26 million euros has been made available to maximize benefits from the free movement of persons and migration in West Africa. The issue of arms smuggling is another challenge the federal government is paying serious attention to. We are you know, looking at uh, use of modern technology to do that. Um, and uh, we, we've started on that. We've uh, done pilot studies uh, with some of the border posts. Um, we also are uh, making efforts to revive the border patrol uh, call within the immigration service. If a person cross national borders, our national borders, we can be able to pick upon and talk to our colleague and say, look, there's something happening, there's something coming. So this is going to be practical operational cooperation with our colleagues. And as you are aware, there is free movement, but it's also coupled with the security challenges. We should be able to handle such issues by sharing intelligence and information among one another. We should be able, after the, this end of this meeting, to save a lot of life of migrants who travel across the desert because we have a common border. Effective regional border management no doubt requires the collaboration of all, but most importantly for the heads of immigration is the firm decision by members to enhance regional security for further development in the region. Gloria Umezuke, Channel Television News. Now, the movement for, of people from one place to another is a time-old tradition, even for Africans. The search for food, water, arable land, and in modern times, an opportunity to live a better life has drawn people from one end of the world to another to start life over and better. That's until it becomes a problem. Our correspondent, Amarachi Ubani, reports. 
A centuries-old tradition has become more than a necessity in the past few years, especially for Africa, where many countries face war, hunger and famine. Factional conflicts in Libya, increased by the ouster and murder of Muammar Gaddafi, and now the influence of the Islamic State has displaced hundreds of thousands of people, causing them to move towards the coastline, hoping to get on ships headed to Europe. Insurgents groups like Al-Shabaab have threatened the peace in Somalia, Kenya and Ethiopia, causing millions to make the Dadaab refugee camp the largest in the world home for many years. Their condition worsened by recent drought plaguing the region. Hundreds in northeastern Nigeria have also been displaced, many fleeing to nearby Cameroon and also making their way through the Sahara Desert to North Africa, where they intend to board dinghies and small boats to make the treacherous journey across the Mediterranean to Europe, which has become the mecca for refugees fleeing violence and famine on the continent. Many have also been forced to cross the borders in West Africa in search of better life elsewhere. Though ECOWAS, civil society and other members of the international community have been making efforts to curb these mass movements of persons. And until the issues of conflicts and poor governance are resolved, migration within Africa will always be an option and migration outside of Africa will always be a goal. Amarachi Ubani, Channel Division News. Now let's bring in more perspectives to the story. Nigeria is West Africa's superpower, but the country continues to face serious security challenges due to cross-border or trans-border criminal activities, as the case may be. Nigeria shares borders with Benin Republic to the west, Chad and Niger in the north, and Cameroon to the east. A 2014 global report on cross-border crime reveals that of the 640 million small arms circulating globally, an estimated 100 million are found in Africa, 30 million in sub-Saharan Africa, and 8 million of those arms are found in West Africa. Now, the porous nature of the borders has triggered an increase in human trafficking, smuggling, drug trafficking, armed robbery, money laundering, and illicit arms trafficking. Researchers say these border crimes undermine Nigeria's national security. Now, to take a further look at this challenge of migration, especially in the West African sub-region, I'm now being joined live from our Abuja studios by the International Organization of Migration Program Manager, Free Movement of Persons and Migration in West Africa, Mr. Franz Celestine. Good evening, Mr. Celestine. Good evening. Now, uh, let's begin with looking at a somewhat bigger picture. How really challenging is this issue of migration, particularly in the West Africa sub-region? Well, uh, migration itself is not a challenge uh, because, as you correctly pointed out uh, in your leading story, uh, people have been migrating for millennia. And uh, migration is uh, how civilization started and a lot of innovation have come from uh, migration. Uh, the challenge and the problem usually comes, and sometimes, not, not always, from and the manner and the condition under uh, which uh, people migrate. There are millions of people who migrate uh, every year uh, to legal channels, but uh, the problem comes when uh, people migrate uh, without the proper documents or they migrate to uh, irregular means. Um, so that renders them vulnerable to uh, smugglers, to uh, uh, um, trafficking, and all sorts of uh, um, dangers that, that uh, can happen throughout their journey. So uh, uh, what we see uh, um, within the West African sub-region, there are quite a few of uh, West African citizens that are looking elsewhere, that are moving, uh, migrating to Europe, uh, to, to, to seek a better life. But it's not the case that uh, all of uh, uh, West African migrants are, are going. In fact, the vast majority of West African citizens uh, that, who choose to migrate, they do so within the region itself. Now, what, what, kind of, what kind of challenges do that pose? I mean, you talk now that 
and most of the visuals, the pictures and so on that we see are those of West Africans headed for Europe. But now you've just talked about the fact that the vast majority actually migrate within the West African sub-region. Now, there are those who raise the issues of security even within the West African sub-region, the issue of porous borders and all this trafficking in arms and drugs and so on. How, within what you know from experience, how can this best be tackled without stopping what would naturally be a normal phenomenon amongst human beings? Well, uh, what, what it requires, it requires uh, the frontline officers to have the necessary training, uh, for them to have the necessary, necessary equipment to detect uh, um, and, and to, to uh, prevent uh, what you referred to uh, possibly as uh, irregular migration, trafficking of small arms, and trafficking of human beings. So uh, the porous borders are an issue, and, and this is what we need to address. It's not the movement of people themselves that, that, that cause the problem, but uh, there, there are many different uh, criminal elements that uh, move within any given uh, group of people uh, that, that, that uh, cause uh, these uh, um, security issues. So um, free movement itself is not the problem because uh, the fact that uh, you are uh, moving freely doesn't mean you're moving without inspection. Uh, the fact that uh, you, uh, you're moving, there's free movement of p persons and also goods and services, but these are still subject to inspection. Anybody who's moving within the ECOWAS space has to possess a valid travel document. That would allow an immigration officer or any frontline officer to inspect that person to make sure that he or she is who they say they are. Uh, so uh, porous borders uh, is the problem. Uh, having the necessary human resources and the financial resources to, to man these borders is, is uh, one of the key uh, to prevent uh, and, 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 and necessarily prosecute the criminal elements that may use uh, the fact that they're, they're, some of these borders are not manned to, to, uh, to smuggle persons, to traffic uh, uh, um, contraband into uh, various countries. Now, uh, in just 30 seconds, I'll have to ask you to make your answer brief. What do you make of the proposal to set up uh, a migration academy? I, I have not seen that proposal, uh, so therefore I, I cannot comment on it. Thank you very much, Mr. Franz Celestine. Thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10. Mr. Franz Celestine, of course, is the IOM Program Manager for West Africa. In part two after the break, Honorable Matthew Kolawole takes over as Kogi State House of Assembly Speaker as Ahmed Umar Imam resigns the position. Do stay on with us.